Good morning, everyone, uh, or afternoon, or evening, or wherever you are. Uh, please let me know if you can't hear me. Uh, we're uh, doing a lot of tricks behind the scene. Uh, my name is Dave Stokes. I'll introduce myself more in a minute. I'm very sad that we didn't actually have a chance to get together in Austin. If you've never been to Austin, it is a beautiful little city, and it's a great place. has a little bit of everything for everybody, and uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to uh, to, to all meet together face to face. So if you have any questions, uh, please pop them up. I'll get to them as uh, quickly as I can. And let me advance the slides, which I'm trying to do. Here we go. So this is a talk on MySQL 8 new features and a peek at what I think is going to happen in 2020, 2021, and thereon. Um, I uh, will have to advise you that uh, uh, I do not have perfect knowledge of the future. That's why Oracle requires me to put in this lovely safe harbor statement. Um, if it's not an already established product out there for download, uh, take anything I say about it with a grain of salt. Now, I'm talking about anything, everything I'm talking about today in the community and the enterprise edition is already out there. But on the Q&A, we might go off on a tangent to something that isn't out there. So if I say something blue, you're thinking sky blue, I'm thinking this color blue, and it ends up being blue cheese. Okay, a uh, little bit about me. Uh, I started using MySQL when it first became available. Um, I've used it in many products or projects. Uh, I, I, my, a lot of my career was used based on open source because I was hired to get things out the door uh, when the money's already been spent, and therefore the only thing available to me was open source software. Uh, many years ago, I joined MySQL AB as a PHP programmer in the certification team. I've gone through the MySQL AB uh, to Sun Microsystems to Oracle transition. Uh, it's been a little bit over 10 years now. I left for a little bit for to go to a startup company called CalPot, which had a columnar storage engine called InfinityDB, and then came back with this job that I have now on the community team opened up. I have both the uh, 80 DBA and dev certifications. I have a lot of previous certifications for that in MySQL and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I live in Texas, uh, well north of Austin, and you'll probably see one of my hound dogs uh, wandering by in the background uh, in a little bit. So one of the things we've been doing with MySQL is trying to make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, in the past, if you're running MySQL 5.6, you were using .NET Connector 3.4 with Enterprise Backup 6.2. I uh, get rather crazy. So uh, with the launch of 8.0, uh, two years ago this past April, we decided to put out everything in MOS. So if you're going to run MySQL 8.0, which is our latest version, uh, please run 8.0 server with 8.0.20 shell, 8.20.0 workbench router, and all the connectors. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for uh, you to find out which version you're supposed to be using. Also, we test everything together, and they all pass QA together. See if I can. There we go. So once again, I'm gonna we're gonna look mainly at the community server. Uh, yes, it's still free under the GPL version two. Uh, you can go out there and download it for your favorite platform. All the uh, Linai out there. Also, if we don't support your current platform, source code is still available. Uh, you either download a tarball or go out to GitHub. some trouble clicking on the next slide. So I'm going to go through features that have been uh, released, uh, kind of going backwards through time. Uh, so if you bear with me, there's some stuff that I'll, I'll backfill. Now, last April, uh, 8020 came out. Um, we improved a lot on hash joins. I'll go into that in a, in a bit. I added more versions of that. Um, hash joins are in many ways faster in, in most cases than the traditional nested loop join that we've done. You'll see some, some stats on that. Uh, also added some binary log transaction compression, and we improved the contention-aware transaction scheduling algorithm. 
Uh, Cats is kind of interesting. Now, this isn't the uh, the, the player musical uh, that uh, was turned into a movie recently. Uh, this was a academic paper from Michigan where they figured out that if you have hot rows or hot columns, how to better handle them uh, to boil down a very intricate academic work down to uh, one sentence is that if you have hot rows or hot columns, uh, feed the greediest resource taker first, and that gets them out of your hair and uh, iterate down to you have them all taken care of. This switch is on at a certain system load and it automatically uh, spots when you have uh, contention for various resources. And this can greatly speed up what you've been doing. Uh, binary log transaction compression. Uh, if you're doing replication, uh, traditional MySQL replication is you make a change to the database and the command that made that change is saved off to a file. That file is transferred to a replica. The replica takes that file and applies it to its copy of the data and updates it. So the two sets of data should be uh, the same. Now, Part of the problem is uh, in the past, things had to be compressed, sent over, uncompressed, uh, and then applied. That no longer happens. Uh, everything's sent over in a compressed format, and the uh, replica knows how to take care of that. So this will save a lot of time uh, in transfer over the network, should save a lot of disk space. Now, back in January, uh, 8019 came out and had some very interesting features. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm just skimming four or five uh, from each release to uh, show off what's what's out there. Um, the, the one that I thought was kind of interesting for a lot of folks uh, right now is too many login attempts. Uh, we updated the, uh, the use of the table statement to be more in line with the SQL standard, uh, limits and common table expressions, and alias on duplicate keys. So, the failed login attempts, if you have an account that you um, really don't want someone messing with, one of the things you can do is when you create the user or alter the user is you can say, okay, they get so many login attempts before you lock the account. And as you can see in the bottom one, um, you can either, if they fail that, just lock it, period. Uh, in the top one, you can see the password lock time is three, which stands for three days. By the way, if you have uh, different granularity you need other than days, please let me know. I'd love to take that to the engineers as a feature request. Now, why is, is this important? Well, your bosses are, are doing a lot of stuff in the cloud, but they're really paying a lot more attention to security. So your bosses are talking cloud, but they are buying security. Tables and rows. Um, we have two sets of statements here that are, are equivalent. Uh, table T is the shorthand for select star from T. Uh, not really a big change, but if you're uh, trying to do better with the SQL standards or you're porting code from another database, uh, this may help you out. Now in the bottom one, uh, you'll see that um, for the value statement on, you're putting in the keyword row. Uh, traditionally, you're used to seeing the bottom one, they're doing insert into T1 values, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, but now we have the row keyword. And let's pop up the next slide. There we go. Alias on duplicate key statements. Um, in the past, uh, it was kind of a, a pain in the rear. Uh, you have to follow uh, the bottom example where you had to use the value keyword to get the information. So to keep duplicates from getting in there, um, you, you'd have to do some weird machination. Uh, the top example, uh, we have the new keyword. And this is more like uh, something like you find in a trigger. And I think this is a little easier to understand for, for most folks. Uh, hopefully this will give you some extra presence of mind there. Okay, way back in October, uh, we had a lot of uh, new additions, including random passwords, which I'll get into detail. Explain and analyze, which is very exciting. Uh, it was our first uh, hash join that we gave out there. Uh, we added uh, ZTSD compression, where you need the library. And the enterprise edition uh, started supporting the HashiCorp vault for at-rest disk encryption. 
Uh, random password is kind of interesting because uh, for years, MySQL has had the ability to be able to uh, let you determine what level of password uh, complexity you wanted, how long, how short, uh, the number of special characters, number of uppercase characters, uh, how long they last before they time out, uh, all sorts of other stuff. Well, now we have the ability to generate random passwords. Uh, once again, security is what your bosses are really looking at. And this is a very handy way to create or alter users to get a random password. Hash joins. Uh, the lovely blue stripes you see there are our normal uh, branch and uh, joins where you take one table and you branch off one at a time. Uh, with a hash, you take the two tables, uh, throw them together in a big box, and start running. Uh, as you can see, they are, well, the blue lines are actually the hashes. The orange lines are the, uh, the branch and, and loop. Uh, in a lot of cases, if you're doing equi joins, which is where you're going join table uh, X to table Y, where X dot A is equal to Y dot A. Uh, you should see a lot of big performance games there. Now, for those of you who are used to trying to optimize your queries, you're used to explain command. Explain is prepended on a query, and it tells you traditionally what the optimizer thinks it's going to do to uh, run the query. Uh, most modern databases have a cost-based optimizer, which tries to find the cheapest way to return all the data. And cheap is usually uh, measured in number of disk reads you have to do. Uh, disk reads are very expensive. They are 100,000 times slower than memory read. And all this information is like a GPS in your car, and it's based on historical information. Uh, like when we get done, I'll probably go out to lunch, and I turn left out of the driveway, right at the first stop sign, uh, left onto the, the main road. Um, that's the way I've been doing it for years. It works great, but I may not know that they're doing construction down the end of the street. Uh, the other street might be closed for repaving, uh, might be washed out. So the historical information is good, but it's not great. Well, Explain Analyze actually takes your query and runs it. Uh, you'll see some information in there where it says uh, actual time. So it actually knows how long it's going to take to run your query. Way back uh, a year ago, uh, we added multi-valued indexes, uh, JSON document validation, dual password clone, and a uh, faster character set collation for uh, some of you that might be able to take advantage of that. Now, multi-valued indexes are mainly for JSON arrays. Uh, MySQL does not have a native array type, and a lot of people have been using the JSON arrays in lieu of that. Now, in the past, if you had an index, there was a one-to-one -one correlation between an entry in a table and the index. So if you had one table entry, you had one index entry. Multi-value indexes let you have more entries in the index than you have rows. Uh, if you're playing with this in JSON data, once you hit around, in, in my testing, this is uh, kind of see the pants, once you get past about 17 million rows, uh, it really, really speeds things up. By the way, if you have questions, uh, make sure to ask them because I'd rather uh, answer, answer them as they come up than, uh, than have you worry about not getting it done. OK, uh, JSON document validation. MySQL added a JSON data type way back in uh, version 5.7, almost five years ago. And as an old-fashioned DBA, I really like the ability just to store JSON data. However, there's some problems with it. There is no way to check the integrity of your data. There's no rigor applied to it. So if you want to do something like a range check or type check or have a required field, uh, traditionally, you couldn't do that with, with, uh, with uh, the JSON data type. So what you can do is you set up a example document, as you see here, and um, as you can see in red, we have a minimum number and a maximum number and required. And this is basically in a table definition. And it says, OK, we're going to take this JSON document, and we're going to uh, make sure that it has an object named my age, and it's going to be of type number. Well, why is that important? Well, it's a lot easier to keep bad data out of your database than trying to go back and fix it later. It uh, 
how much data can uh, manage MySQL efficiently? Uh, depends on your your hardware and your uh, and your uh, and your, uh, your the way your data is set up. And more on you. I know people who run many petabytes worth of information. This was a uh, first question that came through. So let's see if I can get the get the uh, get this to advance. Anyway, I have an example in here. Whoops, let me go back. Well, if you uh, download my slides later, you'll actually see um, some magic where we actually test that and how it fails. Uh, dual passwords, uh, that's my trouble for doing animation. Dual passwords are a weird idea. The first time I saw it, I, I couldn't figure out why you'd want this. Well. Imagine your manager comes to you and said, hey, uh, of the 800 applications we have, we need to change the passwords on all of them. Uh, for some reason, we need to uh, do that as quickly as possible. Uh, you just don't fire up emacs star.php and go through and change all that. Uh, so what you do is you alter the user to have a secondary pa password, and you retain the current password. You go through and you update all the uh, applications at your will and test them. And when you're finally done, as you can see down there on the bottom there, you can discard the old password. And you've done a very easy transition from the old password to the new password. Uh, constraint checks. You saw a little bit of an example of that uh, later. Uh, before this version of MySQL, we would check the syntax, but we didn't actually enforce them. Uh, now we have several uh, uh, things that depend on that, so uh, they're out there in the wild. Uh, this is a very simple table. We're creating a table called T1. Uh, first check we're going to do is make sure that C1 is uh, not equal to C2. Uh, make sure the second check there is that C1 is greater than 10. Uh, C2, please uh, take a look at that. The constraint on that is C2 is positive. We'll be uh, checked that C2 is greater than positive. Now, notice we named it C2 underscore positive. If you're going to use constraint checks, please, please, please name them. They make it a lot easier to track them down. Uh, otherwise, you get second constraint check failed, which is uh, not a great message at 3 o'clock in the morning and you're running out of caffeine. Okay, um, going back to uh, two years, uh, two years and two months, almost three months, when 8.0 came out, our first GA version was 8.0.11. Uh, we've done a lot of work. Uh, the, the first big thing was the data dictionary. In the past, if you've gone under varlib, mysql, um, you've seen a whole bunch of files, MYIs, FYDs, FRMs. That was the metadata. And 25 years ago, when mysql started up, that was a good way to do it. Uh, the only trouble is those files tend to attract the eyes of junior DBAs, and they tended to get cleaned up or um, just chew up inodes. But it was better to for us to put everything in the database. Why? Well, the NODB storage engine is pretty great for point in time recovery. So if something catastrophic happens, it knows how to rebuild itself. So now you have all that information within the database itself. Uh, side effect is that you can now have millions of tables within a database. And the problem might be that you have millions of tables within a database. Uh, something else we added was histograms. Indexes are great to find particular records that you want. Uh, the only trouble is overhead. Every time you do an insert, a delete, or update, uh, the index table has to be updated. Uh, that overhead can add up. Histograms are kind of like when in school where they had all the A, people whose last name started with A in one column, uh, people started with B in the secondary column, the next row was people whose last name started with C. Um, being, sorry, me having a last name ends with S, I was always near the tail end of the crowd. Uh, histograms give the optimizer a better way to figure out where the data is and get to it uh, quicker. Resource groups. Uh, resource groups let you uh, define certain virtual CPUs on your system uh, for certain classes of data. Uh, so like you assign two CPUs for batch input. Uh, in your SQL statement, you have a comment that said um, resource group equals batch, and the optimizer sees this and knows how to steer it just to those CPUs.
I mentioned CATS earlier, the Contention Aware Transaction Scheduler. Uh, we've done a whole lot with JSON support. Uh, we're the only open source database right now with JSON table. Um, we have a whole bunch of other stuff um, out there like um, we saw with the document validation. Uh, other big change is everything's now optimized around UTF-8 MV4. Uh, this is in part to support multinational Unicode data sets and also because so many folks actually use emojis in their data. Uh, we've improved InterDB cluster. You'll see a little bit more on that in a minute. Uh, we improved our XDev API, which lets you use MySQL as a NoSQL document store, uh, JSON data. Uh, much better temporary table engine. Uh, in the past, if you were if you uh, were doing something with a temporary table and it hit a certain predetermined size limit, it would stop and copy everything over to NODB and then restart. Now, that stop, copy, restart was very expensive. And uh, in general, you're going to find it have a lot better performance. Now, all this uh, since we've gone on the CI CD bandwagon is uh, every four months or so, every three or four months, you're going to see a new version of MySQL. And we're giving you a better SQL. We've added windowing functions for analytics, common table expressions. If you're running subqueries, please look at CTEs. They're much easier to use, write, understand, and modify. Uh, derived tables, uh, the check constraints I mentioned earlier. Uh, the better NoSQL support. I'm not really going into the NoSQL much today. Uh, you'll see a little bit in just a, a moment. Uh, the, with the JSON validation, uh, the, the better JSON support, and using JSON table for taking your NoSQL data, which is in JSON, and casting it as an SQL table for processing with things like windowing functions and uh, common table expressions. Uh, InnoDB cluster, if you haven't seen this before, this is the way we'd kind of like you to architect your data. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, you see that uh, blue box, which is your client application running the MySQL connector. And on that, uh, same machine running a copy of MySQL router. This is a level four router that knows uh, which machines in the underlying cluster are are uh, doing what and to whom. It can also do some load balancing for you and some round robining. Uh, the basic idea is this is a level four proxy. And if you're running in uh, one read write machine and multiple read only machines, uh, the router knows which machines are uh, least loaded and move your your request there. Uh, if you're running it in uh, multi-master mode, uh, there's um, it makes sure that all that gets committed to the right way. And up in the right-hand corner, you see MySQL shell, which is our, our new shell. It is our admin tool. It has a lot of other really neat features. Now, uh, we've also upgraded our standard replication to use a lot of the features from group replication, and we now call that InterDB replica set. So if you don't need the high availability and the fault tolerant and the automatic handover, and you're willing to do the failover by hand, uh, MySQL uh, InnoDB replica set is a very handy tool. Um, oops. Now, the shell has a lot of interesting features. It's an advanced client and code editor. It has command completion. The extent, it has very extensive health support. It speaks three modes, uh, SQL, Python, and JavaScript. So we have libraries that feature all those. You can uh, use those to, to uh, work with your data. It's our admin tool for InnoDB cluster and replica set. Uh, it's also a way to check your five, seven instances before you upgrade to 8.0 for any pops and Google problems. And also, it has a very, very fast parallel bulk loader. So if you have comma separated, tab separated, or JSON data, you want to get in your database very quickly, uh, you can do that all from the shell. Uh, in parallel, I think it goes up to eight or nine threads and really choose up your data. Now, if you fire up our new shell, uh, you'll notice that it's no longer monochromatic. Uh, there you see the little yellow bricks that say JS on them. That means we're in JavaScript mode. And if you look. Uh, a little bit over half way down the page, you'll see SSL cipher in use AES 256. By default, we turn on encryption. As I mentioned earlier, bosses really want to see that. If you don't want the overhead or you're in a situation where you're kind of off in a Faraday cage and don't want to worry about it, you can turn it off. But by default, we're going to make it as secure as we can. And if you notice a little bit further down, 
all the character sets in use are by default UTF-8 and B4. Uh, loading JSON tables, um, JSON files. Uh, when the shell first came out, we had some very clever Python and JavaScript uh, scripts that would go out there and scrape a line at a time and put it into the database. Uh, one of our engineers uh, thought it'd be better to just make that more extensible and create a utility. And um, it, it was a very easy way to do stuff. Uh, however, they looked at it and said, well, let's do this in parallel. Uh, and here you can see that I'm uh, pulling some data from the command line and uh, very, very quick to load a lot of data. So um, talking about uh, this year, uh, 8019 and 8020 has come out. Uh, 8021 is on the horizon. So hopefully very shortly you'll be seeing that. Uh, 8022 a little bit later in the year, and hopefully 8023. So uh, I'd love to hear from you all what you would want to see in other future releases. Uh, let's see, Fabio asked, will you share the slides or presentation afterwards? Yes, I believe the slides are going to be available. I'll put them up on my slide share. I'll tweet that out there in a little bit. Um, so if you have features you want to see uh, in newer releases, please let me know. Um, if I was um, uh, in Austin with you and we were sitting at a bar having a margarita or a shiner and you asked me, what do you, what do you Dave, think uh, is going to pop up for the list of 2020 and 2021? Um, these are kind of my unofficial um, views of what's going to happen. Um, the Enterprise Edition has been really working a lot on security and it's become very, very popular. Um, uh, At-rest encryption, data masking, uh, firewalls that learn your queries and something that falls out of the pattern uh, is not allowed. A uh, whole bunch of other neat features, and we're going to be you're going to see a lot more pushing on that. Uh, you're going to see fur further in enhancements in JSON support and GIS. Uh, in the past, if you were doing something geographical based, I'd urge you to use Post GIS. Uh, since 5.7, we moved over to using the Boost libraries. These folks write some very great libraries, and we uh, contribute to them. Uh, in 5.7, it was a flat world. In 8.0, it's an ellipsoidal world, so you have full wraparound. Uh, very, very fast, very quick uh, support, like 8,233 different uh, geographic systems. Um, you're going to see more functionality added to InnoDB cluster, um, especially um, the clone plugin, which I should have mentioned a little earlier. The clone plugin is really interesting, isn't it? It copies table spaces between servers. Uh, let's see, I have been asked to upload our slides to SCAD. I'll make sure that gets out there. Um, the, um, you're gonna see more features in the XDev API and the new shell. Uh, there's still a few mutexes to eliminate for better performance. Our uh, performance engineer is a uh, very nice gentleman based in, in France. Uh, he runs these wonderful charts, and we pinpoint where things are bogging down. We make changes, and he has to start all over again. But he's been very proactive in uh, hunting down all these problems. I um, think you're going to see more emphasis on Kubernetes-ish deployments, despite, despite uh, that type of world not being great for databases. Databases are not designed to work in an ephemeral world. And spinning up large databases for uh, a few milliseconds and then getting rid of them tends not to do great things for databases. Also, I have a fear that we're, DBAs are going to be harder to find. Uh, they're already pretty hard to find in most markets. And I also think the scope of the job is going to widen a whole lot. And by the way, uh, people that are still suffering from bad data architecture uh, will really see that uh, compound their problems. Uh, instead of having a, uh, a data lake, they're going to have a digital data landfill. Uh, by the way, if you are using the JSON data type, um, I wrote a book on uh, MySQL and JSON, a uh, practical guide to using JSON MySQL. If you've looked at the documentation, it's not exactly written for beginners in mind, so I wrote this book with plenty of examples and code snippets uh, to get you up and running. I am 
uh, tentatively working on a second edition because we've added a lot of stuff in the past uh, two years. And with that, um, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, so far, we've just had questions from Fabiola and Luis. Uh, if you have any others, I'll stick around as long as I can. And uh, uh, if you are too shy to ask on the little uh, Q&A thing here, um, please contact me, david.stokes at oracle.com. Uh, Twitter's at Stoker. Uh, I have a couple blogs out there you can track me down. And with that, that's enough of me rambling. Uh, please, um, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A or contact me otherwise. And with that, um, thank you very much for participating. Hopefully next year we'll be someplace um, and face-to-face -face again. And I hope you have a great day. And please uh, keep yourself safe. Thank you.